Welcome to this course dedicated to the first piano concerto by Johannes Brahms and in this detailed course I will go through the whole piece and explain a lot of aspects. First of all, of course, how to learn this piece in a relatively short time, how to coordinate motions from the very beginning in order not to struggle and uh, how to learn it efficiently, so how to build a very good learning strategy. Recently I got an offer to play this uh, piece with an orchestra and it was a relatively short term offer. I had the, around five weeks from the day when I, I got the offer and uh, day of the uh, performance. And this is not much for a piece of that scale. And uh, when I shared this, uh, this news with my friend, fellow pianist, he told me like, oh no, that's a very bad, bad idea, it's not possible, no, it's uh, it's a disaster, you can't do it so quickly. Uh, and he told me also that uh, he was playing this concerto many times uh, with, uh, with uh, an orchestra, but he struggled every single time and that uh, one needs apparently years in order to master this piece. Well, that wasn't exactly encouraging, you know, but somehow I was quite confident about myself and I knew that I can do it. And this is Tip number one for um, for today, uh, when you have, uh, when you start working on a piece like this one, first of all, please don't freak out about it. Please don't convince yourself that the piece is difficult, because when you do so, your mind is blocked and uh, you're under stress and your body is tense. So whenever you learn on a piece, you will learn tension, and then whenever you will play it as well, you will have some hard time. And I also knew a pianist who has convinced himself that a uh, least B minor sonata is such a difficult and such an enigmatic work. And it's so difficult and he has avoided for the whole life. And finally, when he was already at, the, uh, at a senior age, let's say, he finally dared to approach this piece. And guess what? He learned it without much problems and he, he performed it for the whole life. So. Uh, was it reasonable to convince uh, himself uh, that the, the work is very difficult? That's a question. That's why uh, everything is technology, you know. So in this course, I will give you a very precise technology how to approach this uh, piece, both technically and uh, and musically. I will speak about uh, interpretation, about style also a lot. And I uh, really hope the goal of this course is to make you feel yourself comfortable, confident, and uh, enjoy this music instead of being afraid of it. So let me share uh, some general things about how I um, learned this piece and how I managed to be quite convinced about what I'm doing uh, by the day of the performance, although I had uh, only a little bit more than one month. So first of all, when you start uh, working on a big piece, uh, it's reasonable, in my opinion, to go from a general idea towards details. So from a bigger, for, from a larger picture towards uh, nuances. That's why I have uh, listened to this piece on a daily basis for the first week of preparation. I have listened to this piece on a daily basis uh, comparing different uh, interpretations, but you have to listen to a piece in a very active way, always following the score with your eyes, uh, stopping the recording, analyzing what you have just uh, heard and trying to structure the piece. Because this piece, this concerto is very big. And then of course, uh, use different types of memory. I will explain how to do that uh, on example of different spots. And it also very, very helpful. Uh, what I found really helpful for me, I was practicing a piece during the day with some breaks, of course. Uh, and then in the evening, I was just um, taking the score and before going to sleep, I was just going through the score with my eyes through those spots that I have uh, learned during the day. Because this helps to uh, systematize this material and to um, accelerate the speed with which you will master the piece. In general, working in your head without the instrument is as important and it accelerates the process tremendously. So, let's start. There are a couple of general things about this first movement that I would like to share with you first. Uh, first of all, we have a quite difficult matter. Uh, here we have six quarters in a bar, which makes this movement quite tricky. Uh, first of all, it's easy to get lost sometimes when you have six beats in a bar. Uh, secondly, it's difficult to find a good tempo that would, uh, that would allow us to, on the one side, 
move and feel that flow through the piece. And on the other side, nevertheless, transmit that majestic character that um, should not have any signs of haste. What helps me personally is uh, to feel two rhythmical uh, layers in this movement. Uh, on the larger level, we have to feel the bar rather in two. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, you don't think in beats, you don't think in quarter notes, but you think um, a la breve. So breaking the bar into one, bum, bum, two, bum, bum, one, dum, bum, two. So you think the bar in two. But if you uh, feel actively only that, a la layer of pulsation uh, you have another danger of running forward a bit at some parts you will find yourself uh, falling forward a little bit which is not good because then you destroy this majestic uh, maestoso character of the piece and in order to avoid this running effect this uh, hastiness we have to feel actively another layer of pulsation a smaller level so we have um, alla breve breaking the bar in two, then we skip quarters, don't think about quarters too much, we don't need that layer at all, and then we go one uh, level below and we actively feel eight notes pulsations. So on the one hand you feel like pam, 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 and on the other level below, two levels below, you actively feel that 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 pam 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 that uh, eight notes pulsation. And this is very, very useful, especially when you will uh, play those endless trills and one, two, three, one, two, three, and da one, two, three, da da. Because uh, usually uh, you will always have a tendency of um, playing it faster, um, kind of shortening the sixth bit in the bar which is easy to avoid if you will feel one two three four five six one two three four five six if you will feel those eight notes pulsations and also it's very handy in um, dramatic parts like for example so always feeling that um, very precise very resilient um, pulsation of eight notes through the movement. And this balance of broad movement in two plus this pulsation will give you um, will give you a chance of finding a very comfortable um, tempo. Uh, what might happen here, unfortunately, some orchestras have a tendency of uh, slowing down before the soloist's entry and even if that happens you have to start in your own tempo. You should be prepared to that um, in case it happens and nevertheless uh, take your tempo. Um, because uh, very often <laughs> we have something like one, two, three, ba, 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 ba. Bum, 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 bum. and then you have to start, but it it's difficult to start after <laughs> the music has basically ended, <laughs> because every time we make a rallentando, we're basically wrapping up the music. So, but nevertheless, even if that happens, nevertheless you have to start uh, in your tempo. Uh, then let's speak about this uh, beautiful entry. Uh, I feel always mm, goosebumps in my body when I hear that or when I play it because it sounds um, so retrospective here, this beginning, this solo entry. Because uh, for me it looks like, you know, this uh, film effect when they first show you some scenes from, from the end. And then movie kind of goes back f uh, backwards, and you see what has led to that result. So when so when I play this beginning, I always imagine myself some uh, destroyed ships in the ocean. So you could see that there was a battle, but now you have only rests of it uh, swimming across the oceans, and it feels very tragic and uh, very lost. But nevertheless, we have to keep moving naturally. <laughs> What is um, important here, in order to um, feel yourself comfortable, uh, 
uh, we have to coordinate motions first here because this part is not extremely difficult but nevertheless it might be uncomfortable and in order to resolve that uh, issue we just have to uh, synchronize our motions in such a way that we break all these um, motifs into pairs all these motifs are organized in the pairs and you first implement correct motions using a comfortable dynamics. I would suggest you start learning this part you know, on mezzo forte. And uh, the first one is always played out. So pull in motion. You have to hang properly here. And the second one is always played on the push in motion. So in the keyboard, out, in, out, in, out, in. When you have a repeated note, like for example here, three, four on that E, uh, here of course you release the third finger immediately. Same thing. And always releasing the wrist, always uh, breathing a bit. Um, gaining freedom between the pairs. So at first you have to synchronize it. And I felt myself immediately very comfortable with this um, spot when I have just learned it once uh, in a, let's say, not a very musical way, but nevertheless, that helped him to gain necessary reflexes. Releasing the hand, working with the weight and um, coordinating motions properly. If you do that a couple of times, uh, I'm sure that you will feel yourself very comfortably. As well in the left hand, down, releasing the hand. And always leaning properly toward the thumb. So that interval is our leaning point. We have to regain the control um, over the keyboard. And uh, let, uh, let this piano not confuse yourself because uh, usually when people see piano, uh, the first reflex is to get tense and to whisper. But nevertheless, we have to project the sound here because most probably you're going to play it in, a, in some hole, maybe big hole, and there will be like hundreds of people next to you. So you nevertheless have to project your voice, especially because we have espressivo. And uh, in Brahms music, we have two extremes. Uh, two contrary things, espressivo and dolce. So whenever you see espressivo in Brahms, it should be a rather embodied, should be rather an embodied sound. And when you see dolce, uh, it should be quite impressionistic, very, very delicate, a bit restrained. Uh, the most interesting, uh, <laughs> what you are going to do in Brahms when you see Dolce Espressivo, what happens very often <laughs> as well. But uh, at least when you see Espressivo, don't uh, get tense trying to play too soft and don't try to play too soft. Nevertheless, uh, play with the weight of the hand and project the sound. Then, of course, uh, after coordinating motions, we can... Uh, think about interpretation and think about which bars are more intensive and which are lighter. Like for example, the first bar, I feel that flow towards um, the upper part of that bar. But the second bar, I would play rather in the shadow. So one bar a little bit more intensive. Of course, we are speaking about some nuances. You don't have to play forte piano, but a little bit. And maybe even a bit more support for the lower voice. And then uh, I uh, like to mark that mm, beginning of that descending line. Although if you do it a little bit too much, it might uh, quickly uh, become a bit cheesy. Of course, opening the music a little bit when you have an ascending passage. And here we also have to coordinate motions, uh, making sure that we release properly. Release. Release. So at first you give yourself enough time to release between these positions and then 
don't connect it. So you have to learn yourself to fly over problematic spots, but regaining uh, the contact with the keyboard um, here. So we have certain leaning points when we switch positions. And then of course, uh, here you can allow yourself some rubata because orchestra can follow you. Of course, if you do your rubata clearly, but usually orchestras don't have any problems to wait a little bit for you if you want to uh, play the end of the phrase a little bit more expressively. And then again, this harmony sounds very sweet for, for me personally. That's why I would play it a little bit less. And then making crescendo. This part is very um, quite uncomfortable for me. Uh, that's why fingering is important here. I play that um, fifth bit in bar 97 with 2-4, then quickly releasing the fingers like that, and you open your um, fingers quickly towards black key, and then 3-5, so 2-4, 3-5, but you don't connect that, you don't try to reach. Without the pedal it sounds and looks like pum pum. And I suggest you to approach that spot um, individually, extract it and learn it like that, making sure that you can quickly do that a correct motion. And then release, release. So you break it into elements, making sure that you can release in between. And focus fingers when you need to hit the keys. And it will be uh, immediately much more comfortable than... Of course, taking a little bit of time for these climaxes, I find it's necessary to breathe deeply in this music. So whenever you have um, a climax line, you can allow yourself to uh, make music a little bit broader. Uh, like this one. This spot, uh, of course, you can play 5-4-5-4-5-4-5-4. Five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four. Although I was playing just uh, 5, but I was always playing uh, them also in pairs. So gravity for the first chord, release for the second one. Down, up, down, up, down, up. Here, of course, the fourth finger. So it's up to you. Um, also, also uh, when you play that bar, if you feel uncomfortable, because it might get a little bit uncomfortable here, make sure that you just feel the fourth beat. A bit more support here. So that beat, you don't have to accent it, but just use it as a linear point. So you see, just a little bit of time and I can already uh, control what is happening. Then of course you can also delicately slow down, uh, but of course not tearing apart a musical matter. It should nevertheless feel in a flow. In this bar, same same thing. So we coordinate movements first, but of course last two uh, sixths are separate. Mm -hmm. and so on. And um, I really like to make them a bit shorter to show that shortness. But for that we have to uh, hold the bass long enough. So mm. holding that note and then connecting it with pedal. So. I feel that when you get that uh, G sharp, this is your turning point. This is where you feel crescendo actually. Before I would not do it too much. I already prefer, uh, prefer to mark those uh, E's in bar 105. 
um, because I think that here we have already those signs of marcato that uh, are coming later. Then for this part, here uh, obviously coordinating motions as well in both hands. First, leaning point, your first note, the second one, releasing the hands. And then these two are played separately, so make sure that you rebounds with your wrists and release your hands and also you can practice like like that in order to make sure that you feel yourself comfortable um, on those parallel six and then of course not uh, speeding up so here you have to feel those eight notes pulsations and uh, avoid any uh, acceleration. 